Hello and welcome. Today I've been testing the Lenovo Legion 7i Pro with the RTX 4090. I've now been playing Hogwarts Legacy on this device for over an hour. I thought I'd give you a run through of the thermal performance of this device as well as look at noise profiles that are coming when you're gaming with this device uh, as well as give you a little tour of the actual control center software which in this case is called the Lenovo Vantage. So we'll begin here first, take some measurements. Two exhausts on the back, two exhausts on the right. This strip here is tucked away behind the screen hinge as you can see here. So you won't actually be feeling that heat on a day-to-day -day basis. There is some heat up here. So if you touch on this surface, you will notice that it gets quite hot. But overall on the keyboard deck, if you're gaming here, except for the center of the device where all of the heat is being shared along the heat pipes that are there, if you're in the WASP position here with your keyboard and your mouse hand to the side, you're going to have an enjoyable experience, no, no issues whatsoever. So let's grab the temperature gun here and we'll have some measurements. Let's begin on the back. We'll start right here. So we're starting at around 44 degrees, kicking immediately up to about 50. There was a hot spot there. Yeah, so around the exhaust, here's about 52 degrees. And let's see, can we find the hot spot? Okay, if we carry on along here, you guys can see... I'll trace this, it's kind of hard to see, look at the screen and make sure that my laser pointer is pointing at the right direction. So you can see here about 52 degrees. And if we carry on along here towards the middle of this section, we're getting right near about 40 degrees. But if I do a little bit of a closer inspection here, you can see we've now maxed out at about 54. And I have seen, a hot, oh, there we go, 55.9 degrees is the max there. It gets quite hot with that RTX 4090 pumping full 175 watts into this device. And the CPU runs well up there as well, right at around 75 watts. Let's take some temperatures on the deck of this device here. So if we look at the screen hinge, right below the screen hinge here, we've got close to 50 degrees again. So on this left-hand side, I believe the GPU may be on this side. We've got about 54 degrees is the max we're hitting there. And right in the middle, yeah, 54 and a half degrees. So somewhere in that range. And if we mosey on along here towards the side, it drops off and is quite a few degrees cooler here. Now, if you look at the vents on the side here, the air that's being exhausted from there, we're seeing about 49, 50, 50 degrees roughly. It is quite warm and you can definitely feel it. But having my mouse hand here, just a few inches away, you know, it's actually very, very well tuned. The, the fans are exhausting air in a tunnel away from me, so I don't feel any issues with my mouse hand getting warm or getting any sweaty fingertips if I'm on my WAS keys. So let's check the WAS keys next. So here we've got about 40 degrees, maybe 41-ish, uh, 41, 42, oh, saw a hot spot there, 48 degrees, 49. But the nice thing is if I keep my fingers here, and I have been for over an hour, you can feel that it's warm. And I mean, you can, you can feel the airflow as well, the suction going through the keyboard deck. But I've been playing like this for well over an hour now. It's warm. Along everywhere else on this device, it's nice and cool customer. It's, you know, 30 degrees, maybe some places where it hits 40. Uh, in the middle here, right along the middle, where both of the heat vents uh, or the heat pipes meet rather, they're shared amongst the GPU and the CPU, along with the vapor chamber. It does pick up close to around 50 degrees, but in, in most likely scenarios, you will not be placing your hands here when you're gaming. You'd be here off to the side and your mouse hand to the right. The next thing we'll do is take some sound measurements. So there are three predefined modes on this device. There is performance mode, balance mode, and then the quiet mode. So let's jump in here. I just want to show you, so if we look here, we're running at about 155, 160 watts, sometimes dropping into about 165, 170 watts. First measurement will be at the device, so what is the sound level at the exhaust port? And then the second measurement will be at ear level to see what is the actual audible uh, noise vo volume that we're hearing. So let's begin with this, 62 decibels, and, and at ear level we're getting about 50 decibels. All right, so now what we'll do is we'll swap over to the Lenovo Vantage software. Let's switch this out to the performance mode, and I'll show you how that affects the performance as well as the sound noise. So performance-wise, we're still sitting at right around 150 watts. Uh, the CPU is at 91 degrees, the GPU at 78. And let's take our measurements again. At the device exhaust, about 64 decibels. And then at ear level, I'll hold it up here, about 50 decibels. Now we'll switch modes. Let's go to the balance mode. So with balance mode, we get power tuned down a little bit. The brightness on the display goes down just to reduce the overall amount of heat that's generated. The keyboard backlight is also turned off by default. So bouncing between 65 and 66 decibels and let's do it at ear level, right at around 50 decibels again. And finally, we'll switch into our quiet mode here. 
which should drop the power down significantly. Yeah, so as we can see here, now we're getting really laggy and stuttery playback. We're right around 60 watts, 55 watts, and but we're getting a locked 30 frames per second here, so the GPU really gets restricted. This is similar to the mode you would see kind of on battery life. Uh, in fact, on battery life, it would drop down a little bit further. Keep in mind, I'm running an ultra preset here with all of the game settings cranked, including ray tracing, DLSS, everything is turned on here. So about 58, 59 decibels. We'll just round it off to 60. And at ear level, about 43 decibels now. So much quieter, but you can see here that the performance is also significantly affected. I'm seeing about 30 frames per second roughly locked, but about 55 watts to the GPU and about 25 watts to the CPU. Uh, but the nice thing about this, if, if you're comfortable with playing this way, the CPU running is running at about 72 degrees right now and the GPU is at 64 degrees. Hey, it's a nice and quiet and cool system. If we go over to our display settings, let's turn off all of the ray tracing. And as you can see here, so now I'm running at 60 plus frames per second. All I did was turn off ray tracing. I'm at 55 watts to the GPU and 30 watts to the CPU. Holy cow, this is impressive performance. I mean, I would be totally fine playing in this quiet mode. This is a very nice and smooth gameplay experience if you wanna play quiet mode without having a lot of heat or fan noise. And if I turn up the volume here a little bit, I can totally game without having any. So this is about halfway. And at full volume. And the last one we didn't check is fans at full speed. So let me just demonstrate that here. We'll crank up to our custom mode, which means I've got all of my tuned settings here locked. And we'll crank the fans to full. 75 decibels at the exhaust port. Yeah, about 57 decibels of fan noise at ear level with the fans cranked to full. All right, and last but not least, let's take an overview here of the Lenovo Vantage software, which is used to administer, is administer the Legion 7i Pro for 2023. This is uh, Lenovo's control center software, which allows you to manage your device. So when we first open Lenovo Vantage here, we've got a just some quick metrics, some GPU, CPU metrics, as well as VRAM. If you click info here, you get a little bit more information, some parts and BIOS information about the device, as well as CPU, memory, and storage. And you can go in here and check for a system update. So that part is well done. The Lenovo Vantage is bundled with many, many, many Lenovo devices, including the IdeaPad 5 Pro, which is my daily driver for the last year and a bit. Uh, and I'm very familiar with this software. So thank you, Lenovo, for keeping things nice and simple and right at your fingertips here, quick and easy. Now, let's just do a quick overview of the system tools here before we jump into the actual performance profiles, tuning, GPU overclocking, uh, as well as some of the other tuning settings for, that you use for gameplay. Then this is the panel here where you'll be working most of the time when you're worried about configuring your settings or you wanna get your settings dialed in just right for your gaming performance on this device. The most uh, interesting settings here are the thermal mode, first of all. So by, by default, you've got three modes, performance, balance, and quiet. And I love this simplification. There's no need to have five modes like on some of the Asus devices or even on some of the other devices that I've tested. Three is more than enough. And new for this year, you've got the option to use the Legion AI engine, which basically tunes your device for settings based on the application that you're currently running and the workload that it's actually operating. Uh, you know, this seems to work pretty well. I've tested it in balance mode. I've been able to get pretty good performance out of it. But again, if you want to get all of that maximum performance out of the 4090, which you've probably paid handsomely for, choose the performance mode. The one I like to use, however, is the custom mode here. And I want to talk about this a little bit in more depth. So once you select the custom mode here, you've got two different options. There is the fan speed. So this one just gives you two options. Full is, you know, crank them all the way. And then custom basically allows you to use this. It's a, it's kind of a simplified curve editor to dial in what you want your you know uh, fan speeds to be at different performance levels, uh, or sorry temperature ranges. But I like to just use either custom and leave it at the defaults. I think it's good enough. Or you can set it to full. You know it's up to you there how much noise you want to tolerate. But this is the more interesting one. So when you click on performance, this is where you can go in and tune all kinds of settings about your Lenovo Legion 7i device. So for example, here you've got your PL1 limit. So this is called the short-term power limit. You've got the long-term power limit, which is your PL2, which is your CPU will kind of settle down to after a short burst period and stay at that wattage or up to that wattage for longer periods of time and sustained performance. You've also got CPU temp limit sets here if you want to use that as 
a way to kind of stage gate your CPU. And you've got some cross loading information. So this is the most interesting one if you want to be gaming. This allows you to basically select the CPU power while the GPU is fully lit up. So if you're powering that 4090 in this device with a full 175 watts, including the dynamic boost, you want to make sure that this is dialed to a level where you're not overpowering the CPU and taking that juice away from the GPU, but at the same time, you've not gone too low so that you're not actually able to push the frame rates that you're getting from the GPU. So 75 watts seems to be a really sweet, pot, sweet spot for the 13th generation i9 CPUs anyway that I've tested thus far. And if you leave it at 75, you get most of the performance without being excessive in terms of power draw or heat. So I've configured this to 75 watts. Then we've got the PL1 Tau. So this is how long you want your PL1 burst to happen when the CPU engages for the first time with some action on the device. It will boost up to that PL1 limit here that you've defined at 119 watts for this amount of time in terms of seconds. And, I love, and I've pulled it all the way back so that I can get just a quick burst and then settle in right at 75 watts so I get stable performance and not this jitteriness and bouncing all over with frame rates because that's kind of irritating. But even if you were to set it to the default, which I believe is 56 seconds, by the time you've loaded up your game, gone through the credits and continued your you know gameplay or started a new game, you would have settled in at that PL1 of about 75 watts anyway so it's not a big issue i've just done this as my personal preference uh, the legion vantage software also gives you control over the dynamic boost you can choose anywhere from 0 to 25 watts and then you've got a configurable tgp so this is something i have not seen in other control center softwares yet offered by any other manufacturer which allows you to actually choose the configurable tgp on your 4090 all the way from 80 watts which is pretty fantastic actually to have this level of control all the way up to 150 watts. Thank you very much Lenovo for giving us this level of control. This is the type of control center software all manufacturers should be aspiring to. And then we've got the GPU temp limit by default and by NVIDIA spec, it's 87 degrees on the 4000 series. Of course, you can tune it down if you wanna run a little bit quieter. And then finally, we've got total processor power target and AC. So that's the quick and easy. Once you do make any changes here though, you do get this save and don't save. Thankfully, you don't need to restart when you do this. You can come in here and you know make the changes live. And I've come in here dozens of times, switch settings, without any game crashing or having any other issues. So overall, this software has been very stable as well. Actually, the most stable I've used thus far. So I'm very, very happy with the overall performance of the software experience itself. Now, the other thing you can do here is you can set a GPU overclock. I've just turned it on. You I mean, you can just turn it on or off if you want the simple solution. But if you click this gear here, you can actually see what it does after you accept the warning from Lenovo saying, hey, it's at your own risk. Uh, but basically what it does when you enable GPU overclock, it gives a small boost to uh, the clock speed and the VRAM speed on the uh, RTX 4090 or whatever GPU you have in this device. Of course, you can tweak this to your heart's content and play around with it until you get it really dialed into uh, one that really works and after you've done some validation with gameplay. But I, I find that you know turning it on and off is easy enough. It gives you maybe a little bit of extra boost. And if I was to spend hours to tweak there, I would maybe get another single digit of performance uh, out of that uh, for how many hours wasted, I do not know. Finally, Network Boost is again dealing with latencies for your device. So you can go in here and choose which apps and stuff you want to disable. You can enable this and this will basically just prioritize your gameplay while it's running in terms of low latencies and uh, low pings versus any other application in the background that may be using your network, whether it's Wi-Fi, or your Ethernet wired network. Uh, so this is actually a really nice feature to have. Thank you. I'm seeing that in more and more devices now. I saw that on the HP Omen 17. It was also available in the Predator and other in the Gigabyte as well. So nice to see that here. And in addition, you have this auto close features, which is to say when you launch a game and you don't want to go in manually and close all of the applications, you've got Chrome running, maybe you're watching Netflix, you've got Messenger open. This auto close will basically select a list of apps. You can go in here, configure this, add a bunch of apps. So when you go into gaming mode or launch a game, it will basically close out those apps, garbage collect them for you. So you get maximum RAM and other resources dedicated to the system to be used for gaming. And finally, you've got a GPU working mode here. So here you can go in and switch to a discrete GPU mode, leave it to hybrid mode, and you can also select it to be hybrid auto mode. I've left it at the default, which is hybrid mode. This is how you get advanced Optimus to kick in. I don't see any reason to switch into the, any other modes. I've done DGPU testing and found that at maximum to give you an additional 10 
percent performance give or take in in some games and then we've got rapid charge so this basically allows you to quick charge the device from zero percent up to 50 percent in 30 minutes i like to turn this off to let my battery live a little bit longer also we can control the legion spectrum here as well as the keyboard itself so you can turn the levels up and down from the keyboard shortcut keys using the function up and down arrows you get one two and three levels before it's off here you can do a little bit more fine grade control uh, and if you go into customize, you can go into the Lenovo Spectrum and choose all kinds of different profiles here for the colors. One thing that is missing from this right now is CPU undervolting. Perhaps Lenovo will offer this in a future update, but for the time being, you can only GPU overclock. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this overview. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and like and subscribe to my channel. And please share this on your social media to help grow this channel. See you in the next one.